Okay, since my other videos seem to turn out quite well, I will just do my JDS Lab C5 review right now. So, like the title says, this is my review for the JDS Lab C5 portable headphone amplifier. Um, this retails for $190 in the US, and um, I think it is well worth the money spent. So, if you saw my previous video from the HeadFi Meet, I really like the sound out of the C5. I call it the uh, the O2's portable counter counterpart, um, and so it's kind of like the O2's younger brother in that sense. Um, so let's start off with the sound quality. So the sound quality is very good, uh, very clean, and um, so let's start with the bass. The bass is well extended. Um, I don't find it to be particularly colored in any way. It sounds just the way it's supposed to sound if the O2 is my reference amp. Um, then the mid-range is also very good. It's a bit more forward from the O2, so it does make the mid-range a little more engaging, especially for guitars and um, natural instruments and uh, female vocals especially. Um, kind of relating to that and transitioning to the highs, um, it is a bit fatiguing. I wouldn't say it's um, very bright, but it is a little bit bright to my ears. Um, I think it might be due to the more forward upper mid-range, and so it is a little more fatiguing compared to the O2, but um, the treble extension is still very good, and you still get the same details that you do as the O2. Um, that being said, as a whole, the sound spectrum is fairly neutral if the O2 is my um, reference amp and um, I really like how this size is compared to the O2 um, and you get a pretty similar sound. So with that in mind let's talk about the um, the sound stage. So the sound stage on the C5 is pretty spacious but it's not as spacious as the O2 so again this is the O2's younger brother in that sense um, and so you'd still get very good instrument separation but you don't get the the width and the depth that you do with um, the O2. So just a heads up on that. Also compared to the O2, the C5 doesn't sound as full, probably because of the sound stage difference between the O2 and so the O2 does make um, instruments seem more lively and realistic sounding, um, where this sounds more compressed, um, relatively speaking. So with that out of the way, um, let's talk about the overall gist of the C5. So I've done measurements with this, and I've gotten a 10 to 11 hour battery life um, with the V-Mode Crossrate M100 and AKG K701. So it is a okay um, portable amplifier for battery life. The advertised amount is 11 to 14 hours, so it is on the low side relative to that um, measurement. Um, compared to the E12, yes, this has a lesser battery life, um, but for my purposes, I think a uh, 10 hour battery life is pretty good. Um, I usually use this at school or on the bus when I commute, so um, the 10 hour battery life is just fine for me. I take this to school, use it, come back home, still has some charge in it, I can usually go about three or four days like that before having to charge it. And the uh, charge time for this is two and a half hours. And um, the battery on this is replaceable. It uses an iPod video, I believe. It is an iPod battery of some sort. So this the battery can be changed. Um, you can also use this while being charged. So let's just go in over to the features. So on the back here we have the mini USB port and you can use that to charge the O2, or I'm sorry, the C5. And this can be used while charging, like I said. Um, here's the power switch. It has a very, very, very nice tactile feel to it. It's probably one of the best switches I've ever encountered so far, to be dead right honest. I mean, this is just a very fun switch to play with. Then moving on to the front plate, right here we have the headphone jack, and um, it does have a little indentation 
as you might be able to see from the camera. And so the headphone jack can accommodate a larger size for um, a jack. In the middle here we have the bass boost switch, which also has a nice clicky sound to it that's pretty satisfying. Um, contrary to what this little diagram here says, um, the bass boost switch is on when the switch is pointed downward, which is kind of counterintuitive, but that's the way it is. So bass boost is off when the switch is up, and when it's on, you push it down. Then over here you have the source input with a 3.5 millimeter jack, and again it's recessed so it can accommodate for a larger jack. And then over here we have the very awesome uh, volume potentiometer. So as you can see, it's very flush with the uh, faceplate of the C5, and so it you can't really adjust this easily if it was in your pocket. Um, I mean, accidentally, that is. Um, of course, you can easily change this with the flick of a finger. Um, I, do, I do this all the time um, in my pocket, so I just use my pinky and flick the switch to, or flip the potentiometer to increase or decrease the sound volume. So it's very nice to turn the, to turn the gain on or off, or high gain or low gain. Uh, you just push the potentiometer in. So let me autofocus. Yeah, so you might be able to hear that. It, um, the gain is toggled and there is a kind of um, effort you need to do to push it in, so you can't really adjust this in your pocket accidentally, which is good because then you won't get a really loud sound all of a sudden. Um, so I do like that about the C5, is that the potentiometer is very robust. And this is actually a digital potentiometer, so digital meaning that it can be reprogrammed. So you can actually unscrew the front plate of the C5 or the back plate. And I guess I'll show you guys the internals. So here's the face plate. Nothing too special. And then inside the C5, you have these rails here, so you can actually adjust which direction the uh, circuit board is. So let me get that to autofocus. There we go. So yeah, there's two rails here. And you can change the orientation of the board so that you can put it in upside down or something. Like so. And um, so yeah, talking about the board, since you can, since this is a digital potentiometer, it can be reprogrammed actually. And um, JDS Labs developed this on the Arduino platform, and so you would use the Arduino to reprogram it. So it is very cool that you can reprogram it. Um, the way you do it is that there's um, these holes down here on the bottom of the circuit board, and you can purchase separate um, header pins. Um, I just bought these from Fry's Electronics. Um, I got an 80-pack for about $5. And um, so you can see the header pins here. And you would attach this to a 6-pin IPS programmer tool, and then you can just hook that up to your computer and uh, adjust the code in Arduino. And I haven't gotten software to work yet um, with regard to the pocket programmer that I purchased, which I'll post a link in the description. Um, but hopefully I can get that adjusted, or rather installed properly soon, so I can change the way this volume potentiometer works. And uh, so just an example of what you can do with this potentiometer is that um, the default value for adjusting the volume is that when you turn this potentiometer in either direction, it, um, it, it determines how long the sensor has been adjusted, and the default value is 55 milliseconds. And depending on how long you hold this, it will keep incrementing the volume every 55 milliseconds. So if I want to change that, I can just go ahead and change that 55 value in the Arduino code and change this to maybe 110 milliseconds, which is twice the time, so it adjusts the volume at a slower rate. So that's one really neat thing about the C5 that I think is unique to the whole portable headphone amplifier world is that you can have a reprogram reprogrammable 
um, volume control. So that's very neat. Uh, definitely something I have never seen before other than do-it-yourself projects. So yeah, here's the circuit board. It's pretty neat. So, as a whole, I do think the JDS Lab C5 portable headphone amplifier is definitely worth the money. Um, I've compared it to the CNC BH portable headphone amplifier, and I do think this offers a more transparent and clean sound to it. The uh, BH was a little more bassy, and I think the mid range was a little more forward compared to this. So it might be a better pairing with the V Motocross Rate M100. But for overall performance, I think the C5 is definitely a worthy competitor or contender with the O2 um, as a reference headphone amplifier. Definitely recommend this. I can't recommend it enough. I think it's well worth the $190 that I paid for this. It's just a fabulous piece of equipment. Um, and it's portable too, which is really awesome because the O2 is transportable and it doesn't fit very well in my pocket. So the way I have this in my pocket is that I have the uh, rubber feet on the back of the C5 and then I would have my iPhone on top of this such that the power switch, the power button is oriented with the same direction as this power switch. And then I attach the line out dock on the bottom. And then I would put this into the source like that. And then I usually use my Vmoto Crossfade M100. And so I would have that cable just like that. So the volume button or volume potentiometer is still very accessible with my pinky finger. And makes in volume, in pocket volume controls really easy. Um, in terms of the bass boost switch down here, um, it is a situational bass boost since it has a plus 6.5 decibel gain at the 80 hertz area, and so it is a pretty substantial bass boost. Um, I find that it has a lot of sub bass. So if you've ever used the Digizoid Zo2 portable subwoofer headphone amplifier. I find the bass boost to be more of a greenish yellow bass boost, so it is a pretty large bass boost, especially in the sub bass. However, on the other hand, I do think this is a very good um, bass boost switch. It doesn't bleed into the mid range a whole lot, unlike the J, unlike the Fio E12. So that's really great about this. And I do use the bass boost switch with the V Moto Crossfade M100s, but only in a noisy environment where the extra gain and sub bass is appreciated. Also with the AKG K701, I almost exclusively use the C5 with it because the, the smaller sound stage compared to the O2 makes the 701 sound a little more natural to my ears. And then I definitely use the bass boost for movie watching and gaming. So. Um, it really brings out the rumble that you would experience in a theater, for example. I call it a theater bass boost. And so it just sounds so awesome with the K701, the bass boost rumble. So there it is, the JDS Labs C5 portable headphone amplifier. You can get custom engravings for it, so just make a note on your order form that you want a custom laser engraving, and they'll email you back saying what you want on it. So... Well worth the $190. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.